solving an absolute value inequality. So we can take a look at this and solve it the same way we do one variable inequalities. We can make an equation to help us find our boundary points. So in this case, this center right here can be 5 or negative 5. So this x plus 3, if this is equal to 5, we know the absolute value of 5 is 5. This center can also, this x plus 3 can also equal negative 5 because we know the absolute value of negative 5 is also 5. So in this case, we are going to have two boundary points, very likely, because x plus 3 can be 5 or negative 5 in order to make this equation true. So here, I can go ahead and solve for x. Subtract a 3 from both sides, subtraction property of equality. X is equal to 2, subtract a 3 from both sides. X is equal to negative 8. So I have these two boundary points. And when I'm looking at them on a number line, it's actually going to divide my number line into three different intervals. So I have here negative 8, and then I have to the left of negative 8. And then let's go ahead and put the 2 here. So then I have a 2, I have in between negative 8 and, and 2, and then I have to the right of 2. And so I have these intervals right here. Now I want to check to see if the actual equations, the x equals 2 and the x equals negative 8, if they're part of the solution. And I check back in the inequality. Because this has an or equal to, 2 and negative 8 are part of the solution. So I can put a solid dot here. I know these make that true because it makes this equation true. And that equation is part right there. So now let's go ahead and check to the left of negative 8. So to the left of negative 8 might be maybe negative 10. We can check anything to the left of negative 8. So let's check negative 10. So I have the absolute value of negative 10 plus 3. And I want to check to see if that's greater than or equal to 5. So here, then I have the absolute value of negative 7, greater than or equal to 5. Absolute value of negative 7 is 7. And that is greater than or equal to 5. That is true. So I know this is part of the solution. So eight, negative 8 and everything to the left of negative 8 is part of the solution. I'm guessing in here this will likely be false, but I'm going to go ahead and check. So let's put this at 0. Let's check our 0. So absolute value of 0 plus 3 is greater than or equal to 5. Absolute value of 3 is just 3. 3 is not greater than or equal to 5. This is false. And then I'm going to go ahead and check to the right of 2. So I can check any number. I can check 3. That seems like an easy one to check. So absolute value of 3 plus 3. I let x equal 3 to see if that's true. And I want to see if that's greater than or equal to 5. Absolute value of 6, greater than or equal to 5. 6 is greater than or equal to 5. This is true. So over here is true as well. Now when x is greater than 2, when it's over here, it's not also meaning this. So this is happening at different places. This is when we use or for our algebraic solution. So here we can say that x is going to be, can be less than or equal to negative 8 or x can be greater than or equal to 2. So this is not happening at the same time. Like when they're overlapping, this, it's either this side or it's this side. So this is my algebraic solution. 